Quick review today on the MC1 Plus from Xstar. This is a charger that I bought in myself for review. And this is one of three models that Xstar do and I've listed out the differences on the screen for you there. Now looking at the back of the box you can see we have automatic charging with this and it can pick two current speeds, half an amp or a single amp. And on the top of the box just shows you the types, the sizes of cell that it can take. So up to a 26650 and the small ones if you are worried about fake chargers, you have a scratch off panel. On the newer boxes, I've seen a card inside with that information on it. So have a look through if you have one of the anniversary edition ones. Now the user manual is something which you might be tempted to ignore, but it is worth having a quick look through. You can see we have the current selection here. This is completely automatic, this charger. You don't have any manual intervention at all. But there are uh, features on this that you might not get on some of the budget ones. You do have an activation feature for low voltages too. And the rest of the manual just covers basic operation and precautions. It's a very simple charger, this one. It's designed uh, purely as plug and play. There's nothing to adjust, although you could influence the charging speed by using a slower USB port. Now you do get a nylon case with this. The quality isn't amazing. It's pretty thin. Uh, it's quite a basic case to have but at least it is somewhere to keep the charger and the cable together that's something that i would say it's worth having that included would have liked a slightly better quality one but it's okay it does the job have the drawstring at the top as well to keep them all in place and the micro usb cable is about one meter in length very common connection so you'll be able to replace that easily i'm just going to show you over the exterior of the charger you see we have some writing on the side there is the micro USB input up to one amp and you can see the markings for the battery the plus there metal slider on this the build is actually okay it's quite a small tiny charger but it feels reasonably well put together and you can see that there's a marking for the half an amp and one amp charging and what happens is it has a contact point on the sliding rail and that's how it works out whether you have a smaller or larger cell to charge that's how it will adjust its charge current on the underside just gives you some uh, embossed writing showing you some of the spec again now as far as different batteries goes i tried a lot of different ones in this including protected and unprotected cells uh, flat and button top i didn't have any problems at all there's plenty of space there to fit the cells in now I've got a 14500 and you can see it's catching slightly when I try and push it down. That's because it's got the lower charge rate for this particular cell. So what I do now is test out some different batteries with my amp tester here. And you can see I've got the 14500 that I've just put in. And we've got a charging rate of just over half an amp. For cells like this you really want to charge them at lower than an amp. Some chargers will only charge at an amp and that's a bit high for these batteries. Now you can see when I put a Rofus branded 18650, the charging is just under one amp. It will depend on the charge state of the battery. Put a rechargeable CR123A and that's in just under half an amp charging for that. That's the ideal charging speed for cells of this type. One amp isn't dangerous, but it will shorten the life of the battery. If you turn it around, the polarity protection kicks in. Nothing bad happens. I've now got a very flat 18650 high drain cell and I got just over an amp charging speed on that which was good to see. And note I am using a mains powered USB charger for this. If you're using a computer port you might get slightly different speeds depending on which one you're using. Now you're not supposed to put um, nickel metal hydride cells in the charger because it won't charge them but this shows you the activation feature. If it detects low voltage it will put a very slight charge into the cell to try and boost up the current. What I've done is charged a variety of different cells with the charger. Now notice on the screen I put there it won't attempt to charge a cell if it's above 4.10 volt and that would be fairly pointless. So I've done some voltage termination tests. You have to do this quickly after it's finished charging and I was getting between 4.17 and 4.2 volts. So good result on the charging. No signs of overcharging or any serious undercharging. Now a quick comparison with the Claris K1. I will link to the review of this at the end of the video. There are some advantages with the Claris. It can do multiple voltages on the lithium cells and it can charge the nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium and you do get the multi-level uh, charge state indicator. 
but it is a fair bit bigger than the X Star, it has to be said. But uh, if you need the AA charging or triple A's, go with that one. But this is really designed for lithium cells. It's quite a good little charger, I quite like it. It's a very basic and simple charger, but it does do a good job of charging the cells, and you have that two levels of charge, making it suitable for larger and smaller lithium cells. If you do need the charge indicator, you can go with the ant version, and the obvious disadvantage is that you can't charge nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium. So thanks for watching the video, and do check out some of my other charger reviews.